Steinbeck. St Steinbeck. Oh, look at this good pup. Look at this good pup. Oh. Yes, you're a good boy. This is where the host sits. Are you gonna are you gonna host the show today? You look very confused by that question. Give me a kiss. Good boy. Okay. Over here, Steinbeck. Good boy. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Cameras and Coffee. Real quickly, today we're, we're going to talk about the future or a potential, I would say probable future of digital photography. And if you think it looks like photography today, this video is going to make you very mad and you should just stop watching now. But first, the intro. First thing, all right, first things first today, I am enjoying a delightful Costa Rica Lazaro Gesha number three from 802 Coffee in Vermont. Yes, Vermont looks like a V, New Hampshire doesn't. That's how you remember that. That's, that's the one thing I learned in third grade that stuck with me. All right, so over the course of the, there's gonna be a bunch of links in the video description. So you can read those and tell me if you think I'm right or wrong or what, where I'm missing the boat. Uh, but in general, Qualcomm, I think it's Qualcomm, and Sony's CEOs have both said at various points in the last year that uh, the future of photography is going to change. They said similar, different, similar things that are basically um, can be summed up as AI and coming technology are going to present a fundamental and paradigm shift, uh, fundamental paradigm shift in the photography space. What we think of today as a camera with either an interchangeable lens or not on the front of it is very possibly a threatened species. That's my take on what's coming in the technology uh, that's, that's on the horizon right now for photography. Okay, so from, here's one after Sony, also, Qualcomm believes the smartphone, smartphone's image quality. That is a choppy, choppy headline. Okay, let's try this again. From Sony Alpha Rumors, after Sony, also Qualcomm believes the, the smartphone's image quality will soon surpass classic system cameras. Now, I read a number of articles on this. There's one, uh, your cell phone takes better camera or you, you don't you don't need ten thousand my ten thousand dollar camera kit just your cell phone something something to that effect it, there's a help an article about that and a few others um i picked out a few that i think are are important to understanding this the general gist of this is that the the ceos of two two leading uh imagery digital imagery companies sony and qualcomm are saying smartphones their image quality is going to surpass that of digital cameras very soon. Now, the, the chorus coming from the digital camera uh, writers and, and experts is pixel size. Smartphones have a tiny little pixel, or a sensor rather, and if you have a pixel that's a quarter the size of a, of a postage stamp, and it has 50 megapixels, and then you have a full frame sensor that's got 50 megapixels well the pixels are much larger they'll create better image quality and that's true and if you think that what's coming in the future of photography looks like what we have today i'd like to introduce you to the leadership of kodak when they were developing digital cameras yeah and we've seen what happened to kodak when digital cameras took off the lesson there being that they forgot that the marketplace changes. And they forgot that companies and paradigms need to shift with technology because all companies, all people are smaller and inconsequential compared to the market forces of improved efficiency. And that's what's going to happen in the photography space. So there are two things here that are gonna make smartphones better. In Two things I can think of, and these are in the near term. Okay, AI, we've, we've talked about a couple of times, AI processing and machine learning with smartphones is going to way, way, way outpace what cameras can do. And a big part of that boils down to this. Smartphones are being used a lot more. They're constantly connected to the internet. There's no reason why 
a company with a smartphone and a camera app can't just say, hey, in the user agreement that we're going to force on you, which is what tech companies, of course, do, you have no choice but to agree, you are going to agree to allow us to use data from every single photo you take and every moment that your camera is running to help improve the works, the workings of our uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms, and then just use that constant stream of data <laughs> Sorry about that, I got spooked by the Roomba there. Um, and just use that constant stream of data to continually train and improve the artificial intelligence. Digital cameras aren't, at least right now, connected to the internet 24-7. I know, you got scared too, Steinbeck, that's okay. And so that, that stream isn't there. You'd have to actually physically upload that information from your camera to the internet willfully. So, so that is a major difference. AI for smartphones, there are avenues there that allow it to constantly be trained 24-7 by tens of thousands of users all at once, meaning that the AI for smartphones will, in a matter of, well, no time at all, eclipse the capabilities of the AI that's being developed by traditional camera manufacturers. Okay, yes, of course, of course, AI is going to be a major difference. But the pixels, everyone's going to say, the pixels, the sensor size, light physics. When you have a bigger sensor, you necessarily will have more image data or better image characteristics. Cell phones can never have a sensor that's even close to APS-C, let alone full frame or medium format. Therefore, cameras are safe. There's gonna come a time, and I'll tell you what, if you're watching this, at the, this, I'm recording this today in December, like 15th, I think it is, of 2022, okay? So if, come back December 15th, 2029, and tell me if I am wrong about this. So there is a, a really interesting technology. Let me uh, tell you which article it is. Uh, new salt grain sized micro camera takes images on par with a full-size cameras. All right, so this was actually released uh, December 5th, 2021. This is an old article, I had to go back and find it. It's from, from freethink.com, does not have a, oh, here it is, the byline is B. David Zarley. All right, so basically the, this is talking about researchers who took a, an image sensor and made it the size of a salt crystal and have shown that it's able to, with very tiny pixels, to create high quality images. Okay, what is the purpose of, of this point? Isn't that you can shrink a sensor to take high quality images? It's that the sensor no longer has to be a deep stack. One of the big things about sensors that make large sensors on smartphones impossible to improbable is the thickness of the sensor stack and the amount of computing power that goes into supporting that larger sensor and the amount of heat dispersion, okay? But what if a sensor only had to be as thick as a salt crystal, or maybe even just a hair thicker, right? Maybe it's a, few, a handful of millimeters thick. Well, then you could put it on the, in the back of your smartphone. Right? Oh, okay, but, but a bigger sensor, let's say that you have the, the back of your smartphone here, and the, this thing's just like a gigantic sensor, but you still need a big lens to focus that light, right? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. There's light field technology out there, and there's a lot of good work going into shrinking the size of lenses, and if a lens doesn't have to focus light at a specific point, then we have a lot of flexibility in what that lens could look like. So here's my theory about what's coming for digital photography. Smartphones will eventually have sensors on them that are quite large, potentially even the same size as the back of the phone, right? That's, let's call that roughly like a six by 12 or six by nine in that range image sensor if you had it on the back of your entire smartphone. 
If you've got the ability then to turn that into a light field camera, you don't need to focus light. You just tell it what to focus on and the computer will focus on that part of it. Combine that with AI, a constant data feed of AI ML learning from every smartphone back to master algorithms at AI ML Central for each of these smartphone companies. And now what we have are a fleet of users training advanced computers to become even better and to develop light field sensor technology that makes smartphones a gigantic sensor. That's what I think is coming for the future. And all of the people who are saying, but the sensor, but the pixels, you have to have a large sensor to have an image that has really good image, like that has that true image characteristic. You can put a really large sensor on the back of a camera and then you have your large sensor. So that's the paradigm shift that I suspect is coming. Tell me if you think I'm off my rocker. I, I know exactly how this is going to go. And uh, tell me what you think I've missed or what paradigm shifts you think are coming for the near future of digital photography. I look forward to reading your comments and I will see everyone in the next Cameras and Coffee.